Okay, so you've registered with Xero and you've grabbed your free trial. So what happens next? Well, we need to set up your organization and I'm going to show you in this video today how to do that in six logical steps. So let's go and see how to do it. So we'll go to settings, general settings. And then the first place we want to go to is organization settings. And here's where you fill in your business details. So you'll have your company name. You can upload your logo if you want to, the type of business that you're in, your organization type, your registration number if you're a limited company, and then you can fill in address details. Just fill something in here. And once you're happy, you can put in phone numbers, email and website. Website, we just click on save. Okay, so the second place we're gonna to go to, settings, general settings, and this time we're gonna choose financial settings. So you'll input your financial year end date. So if you're a limited company, that will be determined by company's house. If you're a sole trader, you might have 31st March in line with the financial year or you might have something different. VAT, you will already have told zero if you're VAT registered. If you're not VAT registered, obviously this is not relevant, but here's where you fill in your VAT scheme. So you might be on the standard accrual scheme, you might be on the cash scheme. Your VAT periods are likely to be quarterly and then you would key in your VAT registration number. Tax defaults refers to VAT and it's simply asking you when you're inputting sales invoices or purchase invoices, how do you want to show the amounts? Do you want to show them before VAT, tax exclusive or after VAT, tax inclusive? I would tend to suggest tax exclusive. So if you're inputting a sales invoice and it's £100 plus £20 VAT, you would be inputting the £100 and zero would calculate the 20. If you had tax inclusive, you'd be inputting your invoice in zero as the total amount of 120. Again, zero would calculate the VAT, but based on that being the gross amount. Tax exclusive is my recommendation, but you can choose. Again, if you're not VAT registered, it's not going to be relevant. Back, so we're going to leave and assume that we're not using that at the moment. There won't be lock dates when you first set up your organisation and the time zone, we're going to choose London. Once we're happy, we select save. Okay, third place we're going to go to again, invoice, again, settings, general settings. And this time we're going to choose invoice settings. You can have more than one branding the standard branding is referred to as standard and we choose options and then we can edit. There's a little bit of flexibility about margins, not an awful lot. You can choose your font and you can choose your font size. And then the section here is the headers or the names on your documents. And I tend to suggest a couple of things here. The first thing is personal preference. I don't like to see capital, so I would suggest that that would be amended to draft invoice like so. Personal preference, it's up to you. But the second thing I think is a bit more important. I don't think it's relevant in the UK to refer to a sales invoice as a tax invoice. So I would suggest that you certainly remove the word tax. So either leave it as invoice or what I tend to do is change it to sales invoice. Continue changing as you want to all the way down. Then we've got some options about what actually appears on the sales invoice and what shows on it. You can tick and untick these until you're happy with the layout. So you maybe want to show unit price and quantity, or maybe you only want to show the total amount. This is the one that I tend to untick, show payment advice cutaway. 
that's where you've got a dotted line at the bottom of your sales invoice with a section that you could cut and send in with your payment. I don't think it's really relevant nowadays if we're paying electronically, so I tend to remove it. But again, it's personal preference and it's up to you. If you've got payment services with credit cards, you can select here and likewise, if people pay you by PayPal, you can choose your options here if these have been set up and linked to your Xero account. Terms and payment advice, this is where you fill in your bank details and anything else that you want to show on your invoice. So if you wanted to say thank you for your business, you could. If it was coming to Christmas time and you wanted to say Merry Christmas, that's the section that you would complete it. We will assume that we're not ready to use quotes in zero, so we're just going to leave that at the moment. But when you're happy, you would just select save. OK, we're going to go to our fourth option where we're going to look at users. So again, settings, general settings. And we're going to find users. And this is where you have your users set up. You can have as many users as you want in your Xero account. You don't pay extra for them. So to add a user, you simply click on invite a user. You fill in their name, their email address, and then you choose the level of access that they want. You might, for example, want to give somebody purely read-only access. So they can access your Xero account, but they can't actually do anything. You've got standard and you've got advisor. If you select either of those, you then have the options down here. Manage users means somebody can add and remove users on your Xero account. If you have payroll and you want somebody to access payroll, you would select there. And if you want to allow somebody to change content bank account details, you would click there. You then choose continue and it gives you a, an option to tailor the word in on an email that will be sent and then you simply say send invite. Right, we're going to have a quick look at the chart of accounts. So it's settings, chart of accounts. Now I've got other videos that explain in more detail how you would, how I would recommend that you tidy up your chart of accounts. So we're not really going to go into it here, but at any point in time you can go and review your chart in this section. You can add accounts, you can delete accounts, and you can archive accounts to suit. And then finally, settings, general settings. Again, the sixth thing we want to have a quick look at are conversion balances. Now, conversion balances are only relevant if you've switched from another system to zero. So the first thing you would do is go to conversion date and you would input the month that you want to start using Xero. So in this instance, we've put June 2016. Because we've said we're starting in June, we, we will then need to input conversion balance as, as required at the 31st of May. You might need help with your, from your accountant to input these, but there might be some that you actually know that are easy to input. So if you know, the account's receivable balance, that's the amounts that are owed to you. The account's payable balance, that's the amounts that you owed to your suppliers. And then you can add accounts so you might know what your bank account balance is at the start. You don't have to have these balances. You can just input the ones that you know at any point in time. And when you're finished, you can save. So now the fun begins. You're ready to actually start processing your transactions. But wait, that's for another video. Subscribe to the channel so that you're notified as new videos are uploaded because there's loads more coming up for you.